Hi guys, welcome to Oddcast, a uh, For Nerds by Nerds show. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. Uh, I like to affectionately call it In Before the Lock. Uh, my two co-hosts here, uh, Judo and Paige, have let Hi me guys. know that I have a tendency to ramble. Um, so, Just a little. So uh, we've decided that I need to work on that. And I decided that the best way to work on that is to have a list of topics and try to get through them in a time trial. Uh, maybe it's my way of saying that I want to play Crash Bandicoot 4. I'm just kidding. I do want to play it, but <laughs> I hate time trials in the Crash games. I hate time trials in the Crash games in Uncharted. I'm looking at you, Uncharted 4. You know what you did? Go back to the corner. Um, so we have a list of topics that we're going to get through, and the goal is to get through each topic in two minutes. Uh, I feel pretty confident that I can do it. I don't think that my two co-hosts think that it is cap uh, something that not at all yeah they i mean not when all face. of us are talking about something when and then <laughs> when you get on a tangent like you just take it and run with it and then it's done it's over it's past to five you, minutes you and we're totally here. you saying bolt the shit out of the topic <laughs> uh i do like to run away with things it is something that i enjoy uh all right so list of topics uh we're gonna try and get through each of them as quickly as possible and um It'll be either a success or failure. Uh, I think that we will succeed. All right, so are we ready? Well, let's find out. Let's find out. All right, here first we go. Topic. All right, first topic, Spider-Man 3. Yeah. Uh, so it's coming out, uh, as we all know, next year. It's slated for December, which is, I think that's pretty cool. I mean, that's Holiday a season. hell of a Christmas present, yeah, right? Yeah, basically. You know, like, uh, Tom Holland I mean, that's just them pushing it as far back as they can possibly push it and still be relevant. It's the very end of <laughs> next year. like. Absolutely, but... Things that we know about Spider-Man 3 is where it gets interesting. So we know that Benedict Cumberbatch is showing up as Doctor Strange. Yes. That is For confirmed. Sure. We know that Sam Raimi is confirmed to direct it. Yeah. And we now know that Jamie Foxx is signed on to reprise, maybe, is Electro? Is it a reprise? We don't know. There's a mystery Pretty around sure that. Pretty sure it's a reprise. Um, we also know that uh, Sam Raimi is friends with Kevin Smith. And the two of them wrote their Mysterio plot line together. And we also know that Sony had a runaway smash hit with Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. So, so the good. rumor is that they are going to attempt to recreate that same magic, but in a live action movie. And rumors abound that Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire have joined the cast. However, they were debunked by Sony. Quickly. Very quickly. Which to me, the gentleman doth protest too much. Um, I think that they're keeping it hush hush. I, I don't know. think that Jamie Foxx's contract was supposed to get out there, but it got out there. My only hope is that he does not reprise his role as Jim Carrey's Riddler but just in like, whatever the next Spider Man. But just like Jamie Foxx, once it got out there, they didn't deny it. As soon as the whole Tom Holland, uh, excuse me, as soon as, soon as the whole Andrew Garfield and whatnot happened, they debunked it immediately. So because that would disrupt their entire plot, like it would give them no surprise. Like, that takes away the shock and awe. And then we know that the Multiverse of Madness, or Doctor Strange into the Multiverse of Madness is coming, and we know that WandaVision is coming, and we know that that also deals a little bit with the multiverse, and we know that Sony and Marvel have to find a way to bring it all together and make it happen, and <laughs> boom, two minutes. <laughs> Nailed it. Rocked it. <laughs> uh, I don't think I can do this, yeah, guys. <laughs> Are you going to have a heart attack? Are you all right? I'm good, I'm good. All right. Okay. What, yeah, what, later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what what's the next topic? I've forgotten. Next now. topic will be uh, we'll go. Driving the bus. Huh? So yeah. much for driving the bus. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, the next topic we'll talk about is oh, we'll, Green Lantern. Yeah, we'll talk about Green Lantern. All right. So uh, as we all know, DC uh, and HBO Max essentially the same thing now. We might as well just call now. call yeah. spade a spade. Like yeah, uh, the the DC streaming service was like you know what man dc universe we're not down with that but you know what we are down with selling out to at&t thank you <laughs> business daddy yeah. um, business daddy <laughs> so all the cw stuff is moving to hbo max all the dc stuff is yep. moving to hbo max yep. and this includes the newly announced green lantern core television show yep well streaming show streaming television show, show. Mm, television in the 20, it's 20 on the television. watch it on your tv yes. yeah things that we know about it we know that it involves a bunch of the lesser known green lanterns as well as the first green lantern which is the one that booster gold was mistaken for yeah um and we know that kilowog's in it and sinestro uh ryan reynolds is not attached to it and continues to bust jokes about it yeah. um, 
<laughs> as anybody should, <laughs> except for my brother who likes that movie for some reason. Oh, we God. know that <laughs> it's set to expand the DC space universe. Um, we also know that there is a film coming out, which is why Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart are not in the television show. And contrary to belief, John Diggle will not become Green Lantern. I know it's teased on the CW, but no. Well, there's rumors that he will for the upcoming Superman show. Yeah, we don't know yet. Don't 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 squash all of our hopes. <laughs> Diggle being a, a Green Lantern would just be weird, but anyways. It would be awesome. <laughs> wasn't there a thing where wasn't his stepfather's last name Stuart? Yes, I believe so. They so, kind of hinted like, at it a long time John ago. John Stewart. Like, come on! His first name, Jiggle's first name is John. Come on! Uh, and, and because it's also supposed to follow lesser-known Green Lanterns, there's also a possibility that it could bring Dingle in as an unknown Green Lantern in the future. And as you can tell by the speed of my voice, I'm going to say that that one is a wrap. Two minutes. I feel confident. I feel very. You confident. got all the information out within that two minutes. D- did I? <laughs> Movie. Are you forgetting something? I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with no, I'm but go with I'm no. gonna give you I'm gonna give you a B minus. Oh yeah, right. you're all right. You feel fast. <laughs> uh, okay. I feel like I did get it all out. I think That's I got it all in minus. before the lock. Damn it. Okay. I gave you a B minus. I know, but, minus but what you can't see is he's rolling his eyes at me like <laughs> he doesn't have faith. All right. Next topic: Blizzard. All right. So, uh, Blizzard. Big company, Blizzard Activision, and we did talk about it in our Zenimax yep. video yep. with Sony potentially buying lesser known companies. We know that Sony does have the money to buy Blizzard. However, the question is. But we're not talking about that. Yeah, you know, would they want to buy Blizzard, especially since a lot of the talent has left Blizzard? Um, and this talent actually comes in the form of one of the original co founders of Blizzard has started his own company called Dream Cloud, which has two studios underneath it. And we now know that some of the head game designers, directors, and writers uh, for a whole bunch of RTS strategy games that I grew up with, like yeah. Command and Conquer, yeah. StarCraft II, WarCraft III, all of them have started their own company. So the company that was founded by the co-founder is DreamCloud, which to me is very reminiscent of when DreamWorks was created because DreamWorks was of course a bunch of animators and story designers that left Disney to start their own company. And DreamCloud is kind of accomplishing that same goal. And then you have Frost Giant Games, which only announced itself last week. I am very excited to see what they roll out But I wonder if they're actually gonna actually clown Blizzard like DreamWorks clowned at Disney. I feel like they could. And Frost Giants are the ones created by the the developers who, who core developers who left. You didn't tell their their name. That's that's Frost Giant. Yeah, yes. Frost Giant Games. And yes. then DreamCloud is the other one, which is the co-founder, the co-founder. with a new yeah. company. Yes. You said that like four times. You just didn't connect Frost Giant with the other one. <laughs> yeah, Frost Giant Games. <laughs> <That'd be new. laughs> All right. Next topic. That was, hey, that that was, was way, so way under that two minute mark. Hey, man. I mean, kind of. Right. Gotta make it happen. There uh, wasn't as much depth to that one. Okay, okay. Now, how about I'll start this one because okay. I'm actually really psyched about this one. Okay. Uh, free guy. Yeah, free guy. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. I'm okay. So we both saw the second trailer, and I, I saw, I saw, I saw the second trailer. So, but what I was saying is that we've both seen it, and we both came away with different feelings. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to like it even more now that I've seen the second trailer, and you feel like you're going to like it even less yes. now that you've seen it. And yes. I feel the exact same way because I already knew what the, the, this was going to be, how it was based off the first trailer. He's a PC! He's a PC who decide, who figures out that he's actually in a video... He is a PC and in a video game and has no choice, and he's just data. Like, so obviously, he's going to try to get out, and there's like, that's the whole conflict of the fucking movie. Like, what else did you expect, you know? No, so the whole thing or was... Or Joe, since you liked it more. Like, it was obvious in the first trailer what well, it was going to be. But what wasn't obvious to me in the first trailer is that the girl was a player character. Correct. I thought... That, it... Obviously, that's how he got the glasses. He got the glasses from a player character. Right, but not her. Yeah, not her. I think that he gets them from somebody else. But now it's a yes, question of free will versus destiny, and now he's got to save the world. I think that it's great. It's snowballing into something bigger. I'm still going to watch it, but like, I just felt that I... That, it would have been better if it would if it all got contained in the game, and then the moment they start bringing but outside it is elements, contained out, in the game. Yeah, but they brought in a lot of outside elements, like the outside company's trying to stop what's happening in the game, and I'm like, okay, right. because they're the ones running the game. It's I connecting know. the in game without like I you've know. seen fucking uh, dot hack or sword art online. Yeah. Come on, man, you got to do one from the I other. So, so essentially, you can't to me, have one without the other. It's true. So essentially, to me, this is a combination of Ready Player One. 
um, the Truman Show and the Lego Movie all into one. And, and I'm unless here for we continue it. on going for it, that's it. Two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I could still talk about it because I'm super psyched about this movie. The second Joe told me that you didn't think it was still good, I was like. Mm. No, bro, this is exactly what it was going to be. Yeah, I, I, I was kind of hoping for something different, but... Um, oh, next topic. What is... what is? Uh, How about Roya and the Last Dragon, Disney's new project coming wait, out? Wait, wait, wait. What was that oh, again? Raya. You said Roya. Uh, sorry. You Ray- said Roya, dude. Yeah, you Raya. said Roya. I was like, wait. <laughs> you told Raya. Me Raya and the Last Dragon. My bad. Jeez, man. Roya's cousin. Twice removed, Roya. <laughs> so, this... <laughs> I, I watched the trailer for the first time today. I hadn't watched it. So the second I watched, I started watching it, I was like, okay, so Kubo. That's yeah. what it felt like. It totally felt like Kubo. Kinda, yeah. And then it felt like How to Train Your Dragon. And then it felt like Avatar just a little with the four, with all of the different, yeah. how they all separated. Yeah. So that was my takeaway from it was, was <laughs> Kubo mixed with How to Train Your Dragon, Dragon with a splash of Avatar in there. Yeah, so to me, it totally read as the Dragon Prince and Avatar had a baby uh, yeah, and Disney Avatar, was producing it, and I was like, yeah, "What?" Yeah. The only yeah. I'm confu- I don't, there's one element about the trailer that was interesting to me. So she has a little pet armadillo, I'm assuming, or some no, sort of armadillo. It's, ma- it's a mystical it's thing. Magic. Yeah, some mystical thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an magic. armadillo bear. Yeah, magic. pretty much. <laughs> it's an armadillo yes. hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, it's an armadillo bear because it becomes huge. Uh, yeah, it becomes huge uh, later in the, no. the trailer. I was like. Magic. It's, I was like, it's gotta be, yeah, it's gotta be some sort of magic or ages to the magic. And it's but, basically so, Appa. It so, becomes and, and Appa. Fine. So, so, but I like, while while it is odd, and I feel like it is all those other things mixed together. I do like Disney's direction instead of it being about a princess. I need, yeah, I want to be a badass warrior like Moana, like. Moana was, I love Moana, her going on her adventure and it not being about her getting married or being a princess is about her saving the world. Like, that's the kind of story I want to see. So I'm I'm curious, even even though it's a hodgepodge of things that I've already seen, I'm still going to watch it. I mean, I'm on board. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I, I uh, all right. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3. That's, cool. yeah. that's all you, bro. All right, so Baldur's Gate 3 is the continuation of Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, obviously, as the number suggests. Xbox, fix your naming mechanisms. Um, So uh, Baldur's Gate 3 follows the story. It looks beautiful. I cannot wait to play it. It is a... uh, It's it's all done in real time until you enter combat, and then it becomes a uh, turn-based combat game where you get to direct your players as to what they're doing. It's set in the world of Faerun, and I am hoping that Minsk and Boo come back because I really need them, because Boo is my favorite giant space hamster that is trapped in a midget body. I just think that is my favorite thing ever, and somebody what's, needs to go for the eyes. What's the time, what's the time, what's the time slip between Baldur's Gate 2 and 3? Like, what's the time, like... I think it's been a couple years, but I don't know. What's a couple? At least 10? Uh, yeah, I think so. So, over a decade. Yeah, and it introduces, I mean, of course, all the classic races of Faerun are there, and I think now Tieflings and Dragonborn are playable since it's using 5th edition mechanics, I, I was just about to say, it's probably going to be using... <laughs> yeah. Which, oh, edition. that works great, because it rolls right into the next topic, because that's essentially all I can say about Baldur's Gate 3, because I haven't played it yet, even though I want to. Mm-hmm. Something fierce. Yeah, something oh, and also there's a, a Rise of the the um, Elithid Kingdom, which looks awesome in the trailers. Uh, Elithids being Mind Flayers, if you're a Stranger Things fan, but not a D&D person. Uh, so, um, that brings us back into D&D, and they have changed up their stats, which is interesting. I just thought it was an interesting thing that if you're a tabletop player out there, you you probably are already aware. Um, they are in a core book that is coming out, I want to say, in November of this year. Uh, they are releasing new information to get rid of negative traits and stats, or stat decreases, to playable character races. So the idea is that it will open the gates so that you can have uh, characters that are outside of their racial um, deficiencies. So like an orc I mean, bard or a cobalt barbarian. So they're removing a negative aspect. They're removing the the penalties for ha- being mixed race. No, they- they're removing negative penalties. Period. So there will yeah. only be pluses or nothing at all. Correct. That makes it less fun, at least to me. I mean, I think it makes it less dynamic, and I think it's in part due to the racial uh, 
inequities that we've been experiencing recently. Um, I think it's a, their response to that to make it their to make there not be any negatives for being a particular race. That's what it feels like to me. And, and I mean, I'm fine I with can it. Totally no, see, it. I can that, see that. That That's is actually the online debate: is that people yeah. see it being that way instead of just being, oh, you get to explore different things as a different character, but overcoming the obstacles against you is kind of part of the hero's journey. Yeah, um, yeah it makes it less dynamic. Uh, a lot of people like Dridst, and as Nick, our friend, likes to point out all the time, D&D is super <laughs> racist. Um, it is. Uh, the world that they've created is super racist. But and not sexist, because all the books say she. No, it no, changes. No, they switch, they switch in between. Every it's almost like every other. Every chapter, yeah. it changes gender. Every other, oh, it changes okay, okay. And I, I feel pretty confident that moving forward, they actually changed it to all they, them um, pronouns instead of... Uh, which is good. I'd rather it be that. She, her, he, him. They yeah, I'd rather it be that. And anyway. then uh, Witcher. Yes, Witcher Blood Origins and Witcher Season 2. I'm all about it. Combined. I need it. I want it in my life. Uh, well, no, the, so the, the sequel is called Blood Origins, and it's about the origin of witchers, period. Um, as well as it takes place when, like, the elves were in power. Right. It It's going to be so fucking badass. It's technically unwritten. Like, there is not a book about this. All the other, the games and the and the show come off of the books that have already been written. This is technically unwritten history. So, is Blood Origins part of The Witcher Netflix, or, I mean, what? Yes, it is It is a prequel series that Netflix is putting on. So, yes. is, this a, is it the season two thing? Like, is it a flashback? No, flash so, or no or season two is a continuation, a, a, season two is a continuation of Geralt and his story in the books. Okay. Uh, that's, and then The Witcher Blood Origins is a prequel series that I believe they announced takes place 1,200 years in the past. Okay. Um, so even, um, uh, now I can't even remember, Varys? Uh, no, no, that's that's a character from another <laughs> show. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't remember his name right now, but the, the older Witcher, uh, one of his men- Geralt's mentors, who's like 700 years old, is going to be in season two, um, as well as there's going to be an animated movie about his backstory and his, I, I want to say his creation, uh, or when he was created a witcher, but I guess his backstory, because um, they're created as children. Uh, but, uh, sorry, I've read too much of The Witcher. I really like no, <laughs> I, 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 this show. I'm super in it. I would totally say this, though. I'm totally excited, and I'd be 100% willing to watch that. It just sounds a bit Marco Polo to me, which scares me. No, so no. It, uh, so it, The Witcher has no. been really popular. So no, was, like unlike Marco Polo, The Witcher has been super successful and has brought them a lot of money. That does not. So here's the thing, though. I can now go into a store and buy Witcher merchandise. I couldn't do that for Marco Polo. Correct. It's the one thing that Netflix has to be looking at, especially with you know my theory of them merging. So more Witcher and stuff is a good Stranger thing. Things. And Game of That's Thrones. That's why Stranger Things was so popular. Was because of all the merchandise that they sold. It's just, it's just making money outside of the show itself. And The Witcher has done that. And true. because of the following of the games and the books, like it already has this epic thing. Stranger uh, like uh, other stuff like Marco Polo. It's just history. It didn't have the cult geek following that The Witcher did. Or it's does. very true. So, and that concludes yeah. In Before the Lock. That was the I last mean, topic. I mean, I'm going to keep talking about it, but <laughs> I could, like, that's fine. Well, I, mean, I guess that was mine. Yes. <laughs> that was my failure. That's fine. I'll accept it. HBO, I hope you're taking notes. If you're going to do a prequel series, A, don't make the main character into a bitch in your final season of the show that you're running. <laughs> Uh, and B, do it while the iron's hot. Don't be like, oh, you know what we'll do? We'll wait, and then do it one show at a time. Nah, man. Nah, brah. That ain't how you make money. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. Um, If you haven't already done so, hit the like, comment uh, what you think the topic should be for the next In Before the Lock. I guarantee, I don't guarantee, uh, that I can do it in two minutes or less. I can deliver the information, damn it. I know I can. I have faith. (laughs) 